It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It's the round table. Yes, it's once again. And of course, I always have a few DJs with me. Uh, <laughs> some weeks more than others, some weeks less. But all boils down to when people are available. Uh, people have real life, real work, and stuff going on. Um, of course, they're always... Uh, we always run late with uh, uh, with Matt. Uh, DJ Fire still got... This is starting to get busy season down there in central Illinois with all the landscaping part of things. I uh, was in contact with him today again, and uh, he just... The man is burning a candle in multiple places, and all you can do is say, I support him 100%, and uh, he needs to uh, make sure his other businesses are working 100%. I wanted to hear how his prom went. Uh, hopefully, I will get a report. Or um, I have not seen a gig log yet from him for his prom. Uh, but again, I I chalked it up to the whole entire thing with uh, um, with his landscaping business. It's being crazy busy um, here in Chicago. Uh, speaking of spring, uh, we got some. Good thunderstorms that moved through in uh, last Friday, and they moved through again this afternoon. And I'm going to get some more thunderstorms tomorrow. So uh, a lot of landscapers here are busy with down trees, bushes, and so forth, so on. And I know I need to have uh, someone come here and do a little work at my uh, house, uh, just because of the fact that we got some uh, damage that we got to get taken care of. With that said, hopefully everyone out there is safe. And if you hear me coughing, it's still my residual cough from being sick a few weeks ago. Yes, yeah, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> so I do apologize to you guys. Uh, with that said, and we were talking a little bit prior to air about uh, equipment, stuff like that, and all new stuff and about things. And one of the first topics I wanted to talk about uh, with you two of you guys, and I showed a uh, couple pictures and I'm not mentioning again I'm not mentioning names I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing uh because we could we could critique we could pull apart things and no one is is perfect for setups I know I make mistakes uh you know Hunter you make mistakes uh Brettley you make mistakes we all make mistakes you know uh we're human you know and you we all learn you know uh you know we all change things up we change our setups up we're always constantly trying to I can't say reinvent ourselves, but move forward and have better and better stuff. You know, like myself grabbing Asteras, uh, changing things around, uh, got a new bigger TV, uh, a few things like that, um, which uh, is kind of cool. And I, again, Hunter is talking about getting a new controller. Uh, Brentley just got a new controller. Uh, we we're talking about that. Uh, hey, Adrian. And we were talking about uh, all the new stuff out there. But I want to talk about uh, one of the things I saw. And I, uh, again, I showed a picture prior to. I'm not saying anything about who it is, where it's at, or anything, because I do not want to say anything bad against the person. He seem, the DJ seems like a very nice person. Uh, I'm just looking at their stuff. And they've been in the business for a little bit. Um, and I'm looking at how they set up their setup. And I ask questions uh, about their setup, not to be mean, but because I wanted to see if they understood what they were doing on their setup and how they place their speaker, speaker placement, so forth and so on. Because it is a lot of geometry, for as knowing where speaker put speakers at and how it sounds and stuff like that. And it may sound good to them, but if you get someone else there, would it sound good to that other person? Would sound good to the crowd coming in, the the couple, the the people at the party, the 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 owner of the facility, uh, so forth, so on. And it it got me to ask a question to myself, which I'm going to ask the, the group. If you see a DJ, doesn't matter. You're at a venue, you see it. You're out, you know, one night at a a restaurant. Uh, you you know, you just left Sam's Corner down there in South Carolina after having a great hot dog, and you go to another. So it's, hey, let's go over here. Let's go have a coffee. With it. There's a DJ in the corner playing music. And that DJ setup is not quite right. Would you go over and strike a conversation up and ask them and try and see if you can help them out and maybe explain 
why you feel it, it's off? Would you try and help them out, try and make them grow, help them grow? Or would you just not pay attention to them and be like, yeah, whatever, uh, do it or do that and walk away? So Hunter, what would you do? Would you try and help someone out or would you say, hey, you know what? You do your thing, I'll do mine. Definitely. I would definitely help them out, give them some tips. Well, how would you how would you do that? How would you walk up to them? How do you say, hey, you know, hey, I'm DJ Cool Thing and Yeah, I would I would I would say that, yeah. <laughs> that I would uh walk up to them, say I'm DJ Cool Thing, professional DJ, and and I'll just give them a comment about the setup. What about if you but, saw something like but, on social media, like Instagram, um, yeah. Facebook? Yeah, yeah, Twitter, yeah, then, yeah I would um then I would TikTok. I, it would, I would kind of say something, but for me, I don't really care a whole lot what people's setups looks like. As long as they're playing good music, that's all that matters. Okay. Okay. Brettley, what about you? What do you, what do you think if you saw a DJ who's been in the business for a bit? And again, it doesn't matter if you saw it at another bar, because I know you do bars. You saw it in our venue, at split, you know, split weddings. You saw it on social media or on YouTube. Would you, I can't, I don't want to say call them out, but say, hey, uh, why did you do that? You know, why, why, why X, Y, Z? Well, when it comes with weddings, I'll go, I'll start there. Because there's another DJ in my market who has earned a pretty sour reputation, to say the least. At least in the DJ circle. With his weddings, I guess he's he does well. But years ago, when I first started DJing here, he would call, like, walk up to people, well, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. And at the time, he was one of the only real independent DJs in this market. And by him having that attitude, and even though he may not have been, you know, may have tried to have been helpful, but it came off as arrogant and cocky, I'm not going to get into, you know, like, even you know, say something to somebody anymore, especially in person, because I don't want to come off arrogant or cocky because you've seen my setups. And like working at a couple of the venues I do where they do have multiple DJs in a day or multiple, you know, events in a day. Every, you know, people have seen what I've come up with for my setup and know how much time I am, you know, take with it and how meticulous I've gotten with it. And... For me to go and talk to somebody, hey, it doesn't look right, it would just, in my opinion, be off-putting to the person I'm talking to, even if they're a friend. Now, there have been a couple instances where DJs that work for my friend's companies have really gone overboard and just terrible, terrible, terrible. I mean, one hadn't even started the day yet, and the tip jar was on his, you know, on his table for a wedding. I called his boss, and I'm like, dude. Here's a picture of his setup. I know you better than this. You might want to talk to him before things get going. Needless to say, the tip jar got taken down. The cables got managed. The dance lights, instead of laying kind of on the floor shooting up, got put on their stands. Dude was taking the path of lazy least resistance. Now, on social media, I'm not even commenting. I have no, I will look at setups and get ideas. But I'm not going to play the measuring it with a tape measure contest online. It's just not worth it in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it actually, someone made a count, you know, put my, a few of my setups online on one of the bad DJ pages, and it disappeared in about 30 minutes or less because the entire page kind of backfired on it and tore this guy apart and then put his setup on the page. Which was very simple. The one you showed us earlier, take about five steps down. And that's what his setup was. But so I'm not going to get into that commentary. And most of the clubs I'm at, they're all, you know, very, you bring a simple setup or it's plug and play. No one is trying to impress anyone. Like, I wouldn't say not impressed, but my, my setup, I use an animal house is very simple but it's effective i don't have a big light show but it's not needed there it's a college dance party bar i'm not going to start you know blasting lasers and all that and the venues that really do need that 
are pretty much all plug and play, in my opinion. There are a couple that you might have to bring some supplemental equipment just to, you know, amplify what they have. But for the, you know, the real lighting effects and setups, clubs are going to be plug and play. Like here, uh, I'll be putting my Giggle Bob from uh, Icon on Friday night. It is the total plug and play, and they have everything. I just bring my laptop. Same with like Legends here in Lacrosse, Lacrosse Beer House. Now, granted, I'm a record box DJ, so they have record box there. It makes everything easy. But most of the clubs are going to be a lot more elaborate and ready to go. But, See, and yeah. It, it's one of the things with, for me, I, I guess, and again, I don't want to come off as a jerk. But I, when I see something, I ask questions. And the reason why is that I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they got to where they're at. How did they figure out, why did they think that this is a good route? So one, because the fact that I'm looking at it and going, why are they doing it? Is it, there a reason why? Is there a reason behind it? I'll uh, give you an example. Like Hunter, he had speakers on the ground because the fact that the venue he was at has slow, uh, a sloped roof. He didn't have enough enough space to the speakers on stands. Here comes Matt, late as normal. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, Matt? Hey, DJ Sosa, what's up? Um, you know, we, you know, and you know, something like that happens. And again, I would ask if I didn't know, if I didn't know Hunter, be like, hey, cool thing. I have a question for you. Why and right above, yeah, and, and, and yeah, and right above me was literally their TV stand. And that's the thing is that you, you explain to me why you're doing it. Oh, okay. I understand it. But if you're like, no, because I wanted to do this, um, it to me, it's like, w w okay, maybe you don't understand how to do what you're setting up there. You think you're doing the right thing, but you're not. And it's an educational spot that maybe, hey, dude, you know what? I've been doing this for a long time. I'd love to talk to you about your setup. See, I didn't that choose didn't that. Mean, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't choose that course. Someone who. Is, oh no, no, the venue, the facility yeah. said, "Hey, you got to go here." No, I understand that, but if, if it's someone, you know, again, you have a reason why. It just like you know when I watch Matt stuff, you know, and I see his setups. I, you heard me ask him why do he do this, why do you do that, and it's all boils down to there's certain reasons why everyone does things for certain reasons, either because of the fact that you want to spread out really far, have, you know, speakers really far away, or you're really cramped and you get speakers right next to you. Are you trying to, sure. you know, throw sound way in the back? Are you trying to throw sound right or short? It's only a small wedding with 50, 60 people. You don't need a big sound system, you know, or is it you have three, 300 people or 400 people, you need all this huge sound to cover, you know, you know, a big, huge area. You have 3,000 kids and Matt's done that, 3,000 kids at a, a uh, school prom or a uh, homecoming, and he has to have big speakers, big sound, big subwoofers, and you know, again, it all boils down to having. You know, I've always feel the right tool for the right situation, but I like to help people. I like to, and again, it's not calling them out, saying that hey, you're an idiot, you know what you're doing. It's, you know what, maybe they don't know, they don't understand what they're doing wrong. Like you're. Uh, like you were saying before, Brentley, um, the people that were setting stuff up, equipment up, putting lights on the ground, not putting them on stands, not doing the right things. Is it laziness or they didn't understand what needs to be done, how to things, how things look? You know, and that's that's one of the things, again, I always think as self, ourselves as DJs trying to move forward with our thinking, trying to get the best product possible. And the reason why is that is we, you know, come in and we're saying we're professionals and we're the ones doing the service. We need to, I, I can't say look the part, but at least act the part. And what I mean by that is at least understanding how stuff works. And when something's not working, it may be explaining to be a facility manager, be like, oh, we're going to put you in this corner because we always put DJs here. Well, if you do that sound, we sound works, it, it doesn't work right. And I can't see the dance floor. Mm -hmm. Is there any way possible I can move here? I can move here. Is there any way possible I can put speakers here and here? Well, how are you going to do that? You're going to run cables. I don't want cables. Oh no, I can do them wirelessly. Or hey, you know what? I can do. I can. I can do things other DJs can't do. And you get into technical stuff, and they're like, really? 
you can do that stuff. And that's, that to me is one of those things of teaching, you know, others of what you can do. I guess, also, that's something I should have, yeah, I guess that's something I should have done. Just go over and tell them that the corner wasn't going to work, but you, you could have, but again, it, it worked out for you. Yeah, it did. And again, and plus, it, 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 people yeah, were happy. Plus, your your, plus, your yeah, happy. Yeah. yeah, and plus they had a chair on one side of the wall, and of course I had my boxes on on the other end. Of course, the other side was the door leading outside. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to block the door. <laughs> so, the dance floor because the dance floor was teeny tiny. And see, that's why I always check with a venue if I've never been there, even the venues I'm at regularly, because you never know when they're going to you know throw a curveball at you. Hey, this couple wants to dance for the middle of the room, which is something that does happen occasionally at one of the venues I'm at here in Lacrosse. And knowing that means they're going to set up the head table differently. With that meaning, I have to bring uh, totems for my speakers to surround the dance floor, and then set up differently. And that's something I'm just super conscientious about, making sure I've made that call the week up. And a side note, though, buddy. When people, I guess a lot of people hit me up for advice, DJs that is, mm -hmm. and especially off the Driftless DJs page like we have here, a lot of people will definitely mess with me like, hey, you do this. What are you using? How are you getting this? And I'm more than happy to, with them coming to me, answer all of that. But I don't want to be like at a venue going, why do you do? It just seems out of place. Again, you have to uh, you have to approach it the right way, and you have yeah. to, have to talk to them, and not at, you have to talk to them as a peer, not as your superior to them. And that's the other thing is they asking questions and saying, "Why, you know, okay, I, that's not bad. I didn't think of that. Oh, okay, why did you not do it this way? You know, nicely, not being, oh, well, you did this wrong. You know, it'd, it'd be like if I didn't know Hunter and I came walking into that bar when he did the birthday party. And he walked up to him and said, hey, I'm Buddy with TVM Productions. Hey, you just screwed up. You got speakers on the floor. What kind of DJ are you? Well, again, that's 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 the wrong way. We'll walk and, 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 and that, you know, how that made me feel, especially with autism. That would well, yeah, you, you, you could be it's upset, bad. I don't want to do that. But if if I walked in there and say, hey, oh, hey, I think I saw this guy before. Hey, are, are you, like, on YouTube? Yeah, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm DJ Cool Thing I'm on YouTube. Uh, you know, oh, hey, what's going on? Hey, I got, I got a question for you, man. What, what, what's, 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 what's the speakers on the floor? Why did you do that? Oh, I got this TV bracket above me. I, I you know, I put them on stands. There's not a lot of room here. I put it on stands. I got to put further out. It just won't work right. I just, yeah, as you see, my thumb is, yeah, my thumb is just getting better from when I hit it, jumping up and down. There you oh, go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, yeah. you can't say your thumbs up in the air, and go up, jump up down. You know, for, no, but I, I cut myself. <laughs> well, thank goodness you're okay. You didn't have to go to the hospital and get an amputation or anything like that. No. <laughs> but again, I, I, I feel approach is half of it. And that's why I'm saying that we, you know, I do this show to try and help people, you know, understand stuff. And that's why, you know, like in your, uh, in your Facebook group, that's why I put it up there. Cause I want to see these guys grow their business. I want to see, you know, them, you know, explore things and get better. And we have experts here. We have, you know, uh, Matt here, who's a DMX expert, who does phenomenal light shows, and um, I got I got to ask you the next question here because uh, we're going to go to the next question in a second or two. Um, and, and you have you know other people doing other things. I, I just want to I just want to I, I guess I just want to spread my knowledge around to everyone because the fact that not only make us as DJs better. But also, a lot of DJs like to hold stuff in secrets of why. Don't we want to make our craft better? Don't we want to make stuff better? It, it's like it's like Brentley. You're a musician, and I go. I and I, I've always, I teased you. I said Wednesday, just get you out here to play something on here. You know, whatever instrument you want to pick and play. You know, uh, have you guys have you guys made play a song or two? You know, whoever wants to join in, you know, one night. Uh, but the thing is that it's one of the things that you know the uh, notes of music. You hear uh, music, you hear a song. If I say, "Hey, you know, can you grab you grab that? Uh, that's a cello, right? The bass, bass. Okay, grab that bass. Can you start doing Inter Sandman? 
Yeah. But you you know, but you know it, and you, yeah, you know the song. It's not like, hey, you know what, uh, Metallica. Um, they never told you what the song is. You've never heard it. You never can't see it. You can't touch it. You can hear the music, and again, the music is out there. I wouldn't say let's record that because again, they they have copyrights to it and stuff like that. Because I don't want a copyright strike on here. But something like that, if you look at it and you go, okay, fine, great, you can copy it. And it, it shouldn't be, you know, he, they're not only bad in the world playing guitar and playing drums. It's everyone can play guitar and drums. There's tons of different bands, and some do do, uh, you know, um, copy some of the things from other songs from other art, uh, musicians, and they take it and they spin it and do their own thing. You, you look at the Foo Fighters. You know, Dave Grohl can't read music. But yet, look at all the songs he come up with. And especially before the Foo Fighters, when he was a little unknown band, before that, where Kurt Cobain, you know, uh, <laughs> he did the last songs with Kurt Cobain. And again, can't read music. So you had Nirvana, and then you have Foo Fighters. And again, here's a man who has tons of albums, tons of awards, tons of concerts, that he's done over the years and decades and can't read a note of music, but he can sit down with a guitar, start hitting guitar, play drums, start playing music, and design a song that sounds phenomenal that people know it. Tracy's a big, huge Foo Fighter fan, and she can name you tons of songs, and I watch him, and I hear him, and it's one of the things that it's you hear him play and you hear someone who not only loves music, but also it's, it's amazing. And but look at, and yeah. And, and look at Ronnie Millsap. He's blind. He, he creates amazing albums. Well, you can go, you can go through a bunch of people who have physical challenges. You know, it was Stevie wonder. The man's, the man's a genius the man can play piano. The man can sing. The man has tons of songs. Going back again, when he was a little Stevie Wonder, when he was a young kid, the man's amazing. But again, there's tons of artists like that, and it just uh, again copying that stuff and going into other things, and then emulating certain areas. I feel that you know, as a DJ, we should be doing that to help each other out. So, my next point here, since Matt's here, <laughs> um. Want to talk a little bit about YouTube and gig logs? Gig logs. Uh, first thing first, if you guys are tuning in here, uh, make sure you go over to YouTube, follow on YouTube. They all have YouTube channels. And if you're watching this on YouTube, all the links are down below to their channels and a few other DJs who are not here with us right now. Uh, links will be below as well. So make sure you click the like, subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. And talking about gig logs do you feel the gig log as you do them matt i know you do a lot more gig logs than i do i do a few and uh brantley you do and cool thing we all do gig logs do you feel the gig log is dead yes or no no it's no. Not, never the gig log, like the gig log allows me to document the uh, events i do and keep a a track and a history of all my gigs okay like with my uh, last wedding, I can look at the video and say, "Hey, this was November twenty twenty one." What were you, Matt? What you think the gig log is dead or still alive? And I think I think they're still alive. Um, I think though they, like I was thinking about it the other day. Uh, it depends what you show because I watch all of like Jay Book's gig logs, and I know he says he speed in quick mixes and plays one hundred fifty to two hundred songs a night. But if you watch the gig logs, it's the same 10 or 15 songs every single gig log. And it's the same transition. I can predict it every time he starts to play this one song. I'm like, oh, this is going into Ain't No Mountain High or this is going into No Hands. And it's the same transitions every single time. There's no originality. And it's maybe that's like those are the only ones he's got a good dancing crowd for. But it's just like you got to like with mine. Obviously, I'm going to get a great crowd if I play the Cupid Shuffle. Obviously, I'm going to have a packed dance floor if I play um, Don't Stop Believing or I play my uh, Want to Dance with Somebody. But nobody wants to see the same crowd or the same 
same song with different crowd each time. Like, unless something crazy happens, I try to show the variety. So I try to, same thing with my stories. Like, I film the whole gig, like, I film all my gigs. I have a double mount. So I film both my phones. I do the whole thing horizontally and vertically. And that's how I do my stories with the vertical stuff. But I, I, I play, you know, five or 10 of the same songs almost every wedding, like everybody. And I just don't film those because who cares if they've seen it before. I try to showcase new stuff. So I think that's what, you got to keep it fresh. And with mine, I have a different setup every time. There's always some new gear. Um, there's always something, different lighting setup or different this or that. So I think that's that's what makes it unique. With somebody like DJ Barr, even though it's the same setup every time, it's different cultures at every single wedding. So it's totally different music and it's different crowd, different venue. Um, so I think that's what really kind of keeps them alive. When you do the same thing over and over, it just gets stale. And it's like, you know, what's there's nothing new here. So like I... I don't really like I I don't really get excited to watch like you know um what's his name J Books gig logs but DJ Bar like every time that he posts one I'm like oh this is probably going to be interesting uh it's always the same setup you know it's always two or four totems TVs sparklers double 18 SRX speakers every single time um which I think you know makes me different that my setup's always changing and evolving and different but that's just me. So I think you just got to show new stuff. I think that's what keeps you. But even then, I get some gig logs that just don't hit. Uh, I don't know if it's a thumbnail. I don't know if it's because it's not a massive setup that people are seeing. Some gig logs are epic crowds, but they just don't, you know, they don't hit the algorithm right. So that's kind of annoying sometimes. But I don't know. I do them when I have time. Like, I'm so busy right now, and I have 11 or 12 weddings in April and a bunch of other events. So, like, uh, you know, I spent four hours today prepping for my week weddings this weekend and i'm gonna spend another two hours analyzing all the tracks tomorrow so if i have time to post a gig log before my thursday friday saturday gigs and then sunday being easter great if not you know who cares nobody's really waiting and begging me to put them out <laughs> oh you know. uh, yeah speaking of um gig logs make sure you look out for my next gig log which will be not this saturday but the next the following saturday at sam's corner because i'll be djing there again gotta get a chicago yeah. dog this time <laughs> well, that's 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 my thoughts on it i think it's uh it's fun and and you know i like to there's sometimes where i'll film the whole gig as a gig log and then afterwards when i'm looking through the content i'm like i don't really see anything here worth posting like it's whether the venue is just meh whether it's the same setup meh, you know so like the one i have this weekend is they sent me the playlist and it's literally two genres it's all Spanish music and like the different subgenres of Spanish music, and then all like ratchet, ratchet hip hop, like, uh, like, um, like Playboy Cardi style, and Ooh. like, yeah, not not like Lotto or Lizzo, like real, Yachty. like real raunchy, uh, not wedding music hip hop, and uh, I don't know, we'll see. Some of them, some of them are are playable, like Going Bad, Meek Mill, and Drake, um, you know, some stuff like that I can work with just want to rock and some other little oozy stuff but a lot of the stuff on there is like you know some deeper lesser known kevin gates and some not super popular uh, roddy rich and I, I don't know we'll see so i i have a feeling it's it's gonna be i i added a bunch of theirs just in case they request one of them but like i listen to some of them and maybe like 20 percent. i'm like this is just this is gonna kill the dance floor unless him and his like you you could tell she's she's spanish so like that's all her playlist and then he's big into hip-hop so that's all his playlist so um we'll see that could make for an interesting gig log you know that could be that's that's a, a kind of a clash of two worlds and it could be a lot of hip-hop and cumbia and some of the salsas you can get the bpms are very similar you can get that crossovers so you can go from a couple of cumbias into you know into a hip-hop song a faster hip-hop song so you yeah, might be so able sweet. to, you know, pull that and do that, and also just drop those, uh, those little nuggets across and have everyone. And then so Saturday, Saturday is a, a same sex wedding, and it's at this cool venue that's got like a lot of string lights on these iron poles. And so what I'm going to do is like uplight the poles, but then I'm also bringing my my tubes. Finally, I'm I'm unretiring the LED tubes. Uh, I finally got them all like programmed and fixed up and polished up, so six of them work now. So I'm gonna like have six of those around the dancing area. So it should look should look pretty cool for the vision that I have in mind. Uh, we'll see. So Cool 18 is coming out on Saturday. All right, Bruntley, 
What about you? Do you think the gig log is dead? Yes or no? No, it's not. But Solstice, you are right. We definitely, definitely have to keep putting new material in there. I mean, I know some of my gig logs got kind of stagnant at one point last year because there were at least a dozen weddings in a row that were identical playlists, identical do not playlists. And now, and now granted, you're not going to see the same people over and over at every wedding. And being able to hop out of my market and go to a few different areas, that helped a lot for me. But you de- and one person even commented, he's like, why don't you post a mistake or a screw up of some kind? I'm like, and I actually had a comment to him. I'm like, I wish I had one to show you I'm human and screw up. But in the last year, I have my checklists. By the time I get to the gig, I'm so overprepared that I'm not going to fall backwards into that mistake. Well, you also but, don't want to do. You also don't want to do what some of the guys and girls on YouTube uh, do, and that's they say, "Oh, the world's ending because this mistake happened." Such and such, fill in disaster here. I'm late. I'm drunk. Uh, the the groom the, the groom caught in a fire. Whatever the, the disaster is, and you, you watch the video and you find out that. You're late because the fact that you're instead of being here three hours or early, you're two hours and fifty nine minutes early. You're two, you know, one or two minutes late. It's not like you're late, late. Or groom caught on fire because yeah, he was lighting sparklers, and he was walking with a sparkler. You know, it's like okay, that's not he's not on fire. You know, they have their fake you know things that go on yeah. and try to get that clickbait, and that's that's one of the things that one of the reasons why you guys are on here because. I don't see clickbait, even though I may tease Matt with his, uh, he does the uh, the DJ horn looking up for his gig logs, but that's a <laughs> signature thing. Everybody has their signature thing, you know, and it, it's, 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 to me, it's just one of the things that when I see that, I, I, I cringe when I see that stuff with certain DJs having that clickbait stuff. But yeah, with gig logs, like you were saying, keeping new material into it. And actually, I finally decided that this weekend, this last weekend, I kind of knew my club gigs were going to be just madhouses. So I gig logged both nights and realized that, yeah, both sets were pretty similar, but I was 150 miles away in two completely different venues. And yeah, I, I really, when I was coming down to editing the videos, I'm like, you did this video. If there's anything you played in the one the next night, you can't put that in the gig log things of that nature and some of the gig laws i've done i've actually had to edit the songs out like there was one the bride wanted me to open the dance floor with my neck my back from kia and i'm like are you serious and she's like yes 100 i want my mom to leave right away and as soon as her mom all you ladies pop yo got up put her jacket on and walked out after that, I was able to kind of free, you know, free roll with it a little bit, but they had a lot of the ratchet hip hop, you know, Tatiana, Kia, like I was saying, and I, I can't remember everything, but it was bad, bad, like things you couldn't even pay me a good enough tip in a club to play, let alone bust out of the way. But that was on their playlist, so I still have some of that saved on my hard drive just in case the occasion ever arises at one of the clubs I'm at. But, yeah, the gig log definitely has its place. And I, for I, us I who are I selling start, our weddings. I guess I got to start texting you requests then when you're working at a club. Just to drive you crazy. Start sending you messages. You know, in the middle, middle of the dance floor, I just tell you, start playing uh, Sweet Home Alabama and then go yeah. in to uh, play Freebird. Uh, the mat- doing... Thank you to Scooter and a couple other remixes I came out with, found. From what I did at Midwest DJ's Live last April, I had uh, Got Your Money, uh, Ride With Me, Sweet Home Alabama, and uh, the Kid Rock song, All Summer Long. And I think I did all of that in the course of three minutes of my allotted 15 minutes. But doing so, and see, that's the other thing. Keeping your sets fresh means you have to keep going into your computer and actually going through your library, 
and digging for those songs that you've forgotten about. Like I li- have been literally the whole weekend since I got back home from my last gig, been going through charts, going through my main crates and the stuff I've you know thrown in there, but haven't marked and pointed. I've been going through it very, very tediously to make sure I can quick mix out of every song or whatever I need that song I downloaded to do. And I've gotten through the last few months in all of my crates. And it's actually been like, oh, I remember that thing. That's coming back out tonight. And things of that nature. So to keep well, your sets. And that, I feel, is important to the freshness of music and stuff like that. Because, again, you want to make your your guests, especially at weddings, you want to make your customers think of stuff. Like I this, this last wedding I did, um, I played um, Holla Back Girl. And, you know, I haven't played it in a while. But I'm like, you know, I'm going to see what happens with this with the bride. She's out to her friends, screaming and yelling and singing along, especially when you get with the banana part at the end of the song. She's, you know, they're all singing the banana part, you know. They're out there, you know, this is my shh, and, you know, part of the song, you know. And she's doing this stuff and doing all that stuff. I mean, she's like acting out like she's Gwen Stefani in the music video on the dance floor with her friends <laughs> having a ball. And it was a small wedding, a small little wedding, 50, 60 people. And she's having a ball and gave us a five-star review afterwards, which is greatly appreciated. But it's 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 looking at stuff, reading and seeing what works, which I feel is very big. So this goes to my next question for you guys, which uh, we've all run into this, excuse me, multiple times. If you had a client come to you and gives you a music list for an event and picks every song for, let's say, cocktail, dinner, and dance floor, every song they want played. And I talk about, you know, give you like three or four songs here, three or four songs there. Give you every song for that time not let you select, not let you read a dance floor, would you talk to the client and say, this is not what you want because you're not going to get the reaction you want? Or do you just say, okay, yes, and go ahead and do it and become a, basically a glorified iPad? Become your own, basically become Spotify. Uh, the AI that uh, Cool Thing had, uh, he was talking about, uh, I got on the yeah, AI. I, I, think I, got, I think I got rid of that live stream because it didn't go very well. I got a lot of negative stuff. Oh so no, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, you were talking about the AI stuff. And if it, if it, do you become the AI? Do you usually become Spot Spotify for that person? And you just play whatever, and you don't read a dance floor. You don't take requests. You don't do anything. You just play that music. Do you do that, or do you talk to the client and say, uh, "Yeah, th- you've got some great songs here, but." If you really want your friends and family to dance, maybe you would want me to kind of do my job, but you want me to, you know, add to this. You want me to do things to this. What do you I, think, Matt? What do you, what do you I, think? Matt? I welcome that. Uh, maybe I'm in the minority, but if you want to make my job easier by telling me exactly what you want to hear, that's perfectly okay with me. Just let me know how to, like, uh, let me mix it how I want to mix it. But if you give me 150 songs and say don't play anything besides those, great makes my life and i don't have to decide uh what to play so and that the other part of it is now if those songs all suck that's different uh but if like most of them are your typical like wedding songs that you'd play anyway like uh, usually they're not gonna freak out if you throw one or two extra in there but like i always if like that if they send me that then like that's what they want to hear and that's how the night's gonna go they're gonna dance to all that stuff then great um I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm the minority, but I I always tell my clients like, hey, give me you know a Spotify playlist of what you've been kind of working on, thinking of what you want to hear at your reception. Give me a list of must plays and do not plays. Like the easier you can make it for me, so I don't have to try and read the crowd and figure it out. Great, and I'm happy to read the crowd at a wedding, but like you know, give me some sense of or just say give me like some direction of how you want the night, like what kind of vibe you're going for. So like my one on Saturday, they want like classics but with like a housey kind of upbeat tempo so things like um like uh like a craze's remix of uh freak out by la chic uh is a really good example it's like a 70s disco classic but reimagined with a house beat 
so like I would normally probably not play that at a wedding, but now that I know that's what they want, I can easily add tracks that are similar to that, that I know would fit the vibe. So I like to get as much input from the client as I can. If they just say, Hey, we've seen your stuff, do what you do. Then in that, in that case, to me, that means high energy EDM with some classic sprinkled in. Uh, so I'm happy to do that. But if they want a specific style, I, I, I like direction, uh, makes my job easy. Now, if they say, I want all these songs and play them in this specific order, nope. That's too hard. Okay. What about you, uh, Brentley? What do you feel? Years ago, I was really, really, and be it partially financial, I would welcome somebody giving me a complete pre-picked playlist and all of that. I was cool with it. And the last one I did... Even the groom's wife was like, this is going to suck for back of a letter, better word. And the sad thing was I was super familiar with the music he wanted because I used to play in a bluegrass band. He was asking for like Grateful Dead, Old in the Way, Fish, all the hippie stuff, jam bandy kind of things. But none of his friends or guests wanted to hear any of it. I think I got them to dance to Friend of the Devil from the Grateful Dead. In the first 90 minutes. Finally, he comes up to me and looks at me and is like, okay, have at it. Do your thing. And all and the 30 guests that were left, because no one wanted to hear anything he asked me to play, of those 30 of their close friends, they were pretty cool. But now as I get further into it, you know, like what I'm you know accustomed to doing or very comfortable doing, cool, give me 150 songs. But I'm gonna let you know straight out that if you're giving me uptown funk. Want to dance with somebody, Cupid, Cha Cha. I am quick fixing that. We are getting through that stuff because your guests are going to get bored quickly. So I'm, you know, and with that, before I even get to the conversation when someone's giving me a playlist, I've gotten super kind of, I'm trying to find out a reason for them not to book me, actually, on certain aspects of it. Because if you're going to want me to have that all country wedding, that all rock wedding, I want no part of it. Especially in this market, the old country wedding. And a lot of the people that I've dealt with at all country weddings get hammered to the point where they're borderline wanting to pick a fight with you if you don't play their song right then and there. I'm And with the clubs I'm actually at, most people are like, do that at my wedding or do something similar. That's much where, I mean, call me a one-trick pony maybe, but again, being in La Crosse, Wisconsin, in this area, it's very basic, to be lack of a better word. I don't know how better else to explain that. No. but I, I see that you're being attacked. <laughs> yeah, somebody's outside. At least they're, you know, barking because, you know, somebody messed with my car last night. But. Yep. We, we, we talked about that. Hopefully uh, that person or persons is uh, taken care of with uh, your local law enforcement. So, Hunter, DJ Cool Thing, what about you? If someone came up to you and said, hey, these are the songs I want you to play for, you know, for cocktail, for dinner, for dance floor i always want you i want you to play these songs that's it nothing else well um when i did weddings two years ago and hopefully i get back to them soon i always get a song list beforehand i print it out i download the songs beforehand to my hard drive and i do take requests if they're on my hard drive or in a streaming service if, if i'm connected to wi-fi then Unless it's a request by the bride and the groom to not play any song requests, I would not, you know, I would just tell the clients, no, I'm not allowed to give some or take some requests. Then, yeah, I'm, I'm a, then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because, like, again, we do all run into it from time to time. People give you a song list of 60, um, 70, 200 songs, whatever it is. I, I I'm like I want to be able to see the dance floor and see what's going on, and I want to have their their feel for the night, but also here's want to have freedom. Yeah. Here's, yeah, here's how they do it with me. 
they was like they come up with their phones like you have this phone you have that song and they always like think i'm a streaming service and i got all the music in the world even though i don't because i'm very limited like one terabyte of storage and I'm not having, I don't have all the songs in the world. You're not going to have every song in the world. No, no one's going to yeah. have that, you know, even with streaming services, even with, you know, doesn't matter what you look at, what service you have, you're not going to have every single song in the world. It, it's, it's one of the things that, um, plus not every song fits. And that's the other thing when someone gives me a list of songs, it's, you know, I, 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 I look at it and go, okay, fine. Great. I understand the feel you want to do for something. And everything is the stuff you want, but it could become, especially someone picks just one genre for one area, and it kind of becomes humdrum. It's the same thing over and over and over and over again, and it becomes numbing, and people just start drifting off. And it's something that, you know, as a DJ, we want to have the dance floor energized, and we want the people to enjoy themselves who are there and not feel that they're being beat over the head over and over again for the same rhythm throughout the whole entire night, especially if you have everything's the same BPM, same everything. And, you know, having someone who has difficult tastes, such as someone who likes, you know, like Brentley had, you know, someone who likes that kind of classic hippie rock, you know, and putting a few of those songs in there, I would look at it more for a like cocktail and dinner time and like, hey, let me put them there. And then take, you know, the stuff that's good for the dance floor, put it on the dance floor. And, you know, uh, you know, if you're going to do uh, you know, Uptown Funk and stuff like that, that to me is a dance floor song. It's not a cocktail or dinner song. But, like, you have a song like Call Me Maybe, it can work in a dance floor sometimes. But most of the time I do it during cocktail because it's up and down. It's a, it's, it's a roller coaster song because you have a lot of dips, a lot of value. You're up and down, up and down, up and down. See, I'll play Call Me Maybe, but I'm playing the Hey, I Just Met You, the first hook chorus, and I'm done. That's a great dance song to get people jumping and doing, but if you're going to do it like that, and I've really come up with a... You've got to play like three or four of those girl anthems in a row, like do that, do Firework, do something from Gaga, do Pink, and then move out of it to like Justin Bieber to segue into a male singer again. I don't even play Call Me Maybe. It's too oh. lame. <laughs> I just want the hook. I just oh, want, you know, and that's it. And I, I don't quick mix. I don't, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't play, play Katy like Perry either. So. I will not play. I don't play Katy Perry. I don't I don't play Firework, California Girl. I have like a strong rule. I don't play Katy Perry. I don't play Beyonce. Unless it's on the oh, must yeah, play, I, I, I will not voluntarily play those artists. I would Beyonce, play if it Beyonce to me it. is kind of hard. Beyonce, Cuff, Beyonce. Beyonce. Cuff it's Cuff it's okay. I I kind of like the like the beat on Cuff it is is a, like you can't help but kind of sway to it. But everything else, she's also got a really good cover of, um, oh God, what's the name? Ave Maria, Beyonce. No, no, the the one that's uh, it's on her homecoming live track. Uh, I don't know. Come, I'll come back to me. I'll think of it. <laughs> yeah. those, like all those oh, uh, groups. Before I let go. Which is like a uh, a classic, like uh, African American line dance. They they do okay. the like uh, electric slide to that one. Uh, so I, but yeah, it's just I don't like in the DJ idea sharing. Somebody had posted like you know top twenty wedding songs or whatever, and one of them was Crazy in Love. And I can't tell you when the last time I played that is because I don't <laughs> I don't really like it. it and yeah, to me it's every so often. It's not all the time. It's every so often. It's not a bad song, but it's not like a. To be a good go, a uh, good go to song. I think that you know Beyonce ha is talented, but I think that sometimes her voice sounds very harsh. It's like Ariana Grande; she sounds mm -hmm. like she screeches a lot, like she's forcing herself to hit these highs. If she just back that down a little bit and just embrace herself, and and Miley, Miley Cyrus is a perfect example. She's a little more grovelly of a voice, and she can still hit the highs, kind of. But she doesn't like screech them. You know, if you're not pushing you know, beyond her, her range. Yeah, she stays in there. Whereas I know Grande just feels like she's reaching. She's trying to like, you know, pierce your ear sometimes. And uh she does sound like she screeches a lot. And I just don't understand that why someone wants to do that. But again, it's not my my job to judge. <laughs> you know, my job is there to play the music as the customer, you know, wants to have, but also 
guide them the right way on the music on their music journey. And I feel it's another thing that DJs need to do is guide the customer. Because again, we deal with a wedding every single weekend. They deal with a wedding once in their lifetime. They don't want to get, you know, they're not doing a wedding every week and they're not getting married every week. Like, oh yeah, hey, this is wedding number 26 for this year for us that we're doing with the two, between the two of us. It's like, okay, <laughs> you're on the, you're on the 26th. Yeah, yeah. Well, I personally haven't done a wedding in like two years, almost two years. So I don't know what's going on. Well, it's still the same. <laughs> two uh, people who love each other. There's usually a ceremony, a, a cake cutting of some kind, celebration, and lots of uh, lots of people at drinking, usually drink alcohol and dancing. <laughs> I, I've, seen a, I've seen like two or three of the couples get divorced. Like they're no longer there. That's, that's I've awesome. had two and a half months off from weddings and I am dreading next weekend. Honest to God's truth. I am dreading it. Why? I don't know necessarily, but these last two and a half months in the club circuit have just been over the top, way more fun than I ever anticipated. Like some of the stuff that I, I what I can't put in my gig logs well, the pictures I can't post on Facebook. The things that have that it, it and it's not just the guests, it's like even club owners I'm talking with and all that. It's been a very, very cool and comfortable run these past few months, to say the least. And well, you know, also because my my ex girlfriend was a big part of the wedding side of it all. I'm I haven't done a wedding since we broke up. And yeah, I'm kind of mentally still like, okay, you got to do this guy. Can you handle it? Or can you fake it for 16 hours for your first day back? So here, here here's the question for you, because I know that you do uh, partake in the uh, tobacco products. Are you uh, going to cut back and get off of it and go uh, cold turkey before a wedding starts? Or are you going to ramp it up? and? <laughs> I... You remember on Dennis Leary's No Cure for Cancer? <laughs> I love to smoke. I love to smoke. I love to smoke. Uh, when, uh, like, you remember so when they give me the trach? Hey, I have two places to smoke. That is going to be me. If it happens, I will be that guy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, out of all the vices I've had in my life, I love my tobacco. You know, I always see, uh, you know, in the gig logs, I see your packs and it's like, like one pack, usually like three or four packs. I'm like, oh my God, that guy's like a chimney. <laughs> if you see that many packs, I'm stocking up. For the, you get deals if you buy four packs or, you know, X number of packs. And I, you know, so I'll buy them off for like on a Thursday, throw them in the car and just leave them there. So, and, but then, you know, I have my Thursday at residency. I'm out of town Friday, out of town Saturday. Get home Sunday morning. I don't know what prices are in other towns for cigarettes. I know if we go over the border, it's an extra two bucks a pack into Minnesota. If we go to Illinois, you guys are what sixteen dollars a pack right now? Seventeen dollars a pack? I have no. I don't smoke. I have no idea. So I'm kind of cut. You know, wherever I can cut a few corners and costs, I'm doing it to keep my budget down. You know, just like when I used to tour in a band, your band had a per diem. Well. This is how much you're making on this gig. This is what you get to budget for every aspect of it. If you go over a budget on one, you're taking away from the other. So you yeah, want Peter pay Paul. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, this is you know th th this is all the fun things people you know don't take into account when they go out and you know DJ is all the stuff that you have to look at and I, I think Brian S. Red had the best thing uh, he said a couple times videos on figure out what your cost is to walk out that door every single time because you have costs, including, again, your uh, nicotine sticks that you like to eat uh, <laughs> or be a uh, energy drink or be whatever. You have expense, expenses you're doing. You're, you need to drink. You need to eat. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're stopping at McDonald's or you're making something and bringing with you a little bag lunch or eating a protein bar. It, it, you have to kind of look at that and see what you're charging and make sure you're profitable and make sure you're making money. You know, Hunter, again, he's lucky he has his mom and dad helping him out and uh, with with uh, doing uh, some of the uh, work and stuff. And that, you know, he doesn't have to drive because his dad drives for him. And he's yeah. kind of lucky. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure he helps out his parents out, give, you know, with, with the gas and so forth and so on. 
and says, hey, you know what? This is, you know, this is my cost. My cost is, you know, he still got paid for music. He still got paid for certain things, like all of us. And long as he's making money, long as you're making money, and long as you're happy, that's the most important thing. And that's every business is different. And there's no two DJ businesses is the same. There's no two uh, di um, there's no two uh, DJs the same. And because of that, you know, everybody does things differently. Uh, I want to call out uh, Giga Coin first uh, first time chatting. Welcome to the round table. And uh, man, boy. Uh, Mafia gaming, smoking sucks. I'm, I'm not a fan for it, but again, it's that's I, it's each each to their own. I've you know, never smoked. Yeah. I've never smoked my life, but never, and I'm not going to start. Here, I, here and, I, I mean, I grew up, you know, and buddy, you're from the same era where they had the little, you know, tin, you know, ashtrays at McDonald's. Everybody smoked when I was growing up. By the time you were ten, if you weren't smoking, you're very funny. Cigarette vending machines. You go to a restaurant, yeah. family restaurant, right in the vestibule, right in the front when the doors are at. There is a vending machine there with all the cigarettes sitting there. Put the coins in. Pull. I can't tell you how many times I went to the store because both my parents smoked with a note to go buy cigarettes. And I was like, you know, I was like 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old. Uh, my dad be like, ah, uh, he, he didn't want to walk to the, the pharmacy. Hey, you know what? Uh, here, let me write a note real quick. Yeah, I, I need two packs of, of Viceroy's and get two packs of cool for your mom. Here's money. Go. Okay. <laughs> and you know, went up there and did that. Again, it's it, that's that that's totally different in the 80s versus now. And you know, again, um it's just one of the things that you know everyone has their different things, everybody has their own vices, like well, it's just like Brettley said and Again, we had to do what we want to do. But here's a question. Uh, what made you guys want to become a DJ? Wow, that's a, that's one we have to wait till next week because we're going to be getting off here in a few seconds. But I want to thank you for coming in here. And we're going to hold that over till next week for that question. So tune in next week on uh, next Tuesday at 8 o'clock, and we'll have answers for you. So um, thank you for coming in here, too. Uh, here's a, again. This question is: What made you guys want to become a DJ? So yeah, make sure you have week. your DJ stories for next week. And uh, again, man, boy, uh, make sure you come in here and uh, and listen in what's going on. And uh, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate you stopping by the uh, round table. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys all out there. You're watching on Twitch. Thank you so much. If you can give me a follow and follow the channel. Um, if you guys can also uh, go over to YouTube, we are on YouTube. I just re rebroadcast a week from now. Uh, watch the video. You give a thumbs up. Give a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel there. And everyone here has uh, uh, YouTube channels. And, and oh, thank you. Have a good night to yourself too. And I want to thank you guys again for watching. Uh, you guys watching at home. If you guys ever have questions, please just like you see, um, just make sure you get them in earlier so we can ask those questions and stuff like that. Especially again. Get that in the, in the earlier because there's a lot of great stories here with the other DJs there, and we'll have some other DJs. You know, we had our normal roundtable crew, but then we get into uh, guest DJs are coming here every so often. Uh, I'm hoping to have, hopefully, maybe soon DJ Rachel back. Ooh, yeah. Um, and then uh, we're gonna start getting some other guys in here and girls, uh, DJs that you see on YouTube. Um, and again, everyone here has a YouTube channel, so make sure that you go to the YouTube channels uh, and follow their channels. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. And everyone out there, thank you all for watching the show tonight. And we appreciate you guys tuning in to the show, watching this, and having fun. And again, hopefully if you're a DJ, you learn you know, maybe a trick or two. And if you're not a DJ... You learn a little bit about DJing because it is a it's a job like any other job. There's there's pros and cons to everything, and you know when you go to hire someone to do a birthday party or a wedding or whatever the event is, you kind of have a little bit of insight and say, oh hey, you know what? It's not as easy as it is just playing music, and there's much more to that. And everyone here could tell you that it's more than just playing music. Trust me. <laughs>
You guys have a good night and enjoy yourself. We'll see you back here next week, next Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Central Time, and here on Twitch. Peace.